Hello everyone, I'm Sister Vasa, and as usual, I'm having my coffee here in Vienna, in Austria, because, well, because that is where I live. Today we will be continuing our thrilling discussion of Byzantine Vespers, but before I begin, I have to tell you, Zillion, something very important, and that is that I have some talks coming up all over the United States in the following cities. In Loveland, Ohio, that's where the Rocor St. Herman's Conference will be taking place, in Wayne, West Virginia, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Goshen, Indiana, Elmhurst, Illinois, which is in the Chicago area, and then in California, in Diamond Springs and Irvine in the Los Angeles area. Yes, so that is all over the place in America. Very funny. Oh, and I forgot, I'll also be in Atlanta, Georgia. So please check out the exact dates if you live in one of those areas on our new website, www.srvasa.com, and please come join me if you live in, that, in those areas. And another thing, very quickly, we do have a new series of coffee breaks, mini episodes, just two minute episodes of our show, so check that out if you haven't seen one yet. And you know, when you don't feel like listening to me for 10 minutes. Now, moving on with our program, let's get back to Vespers. Please go back and watch our previous episode if you haven't done so yet, so that you know what I'm talking about. I am moving on with the second part of Vespers. After the prayer, vouchsafe, O Lord, we mentioned that prayer last week. Now. After this prayer, we hear a series of hymns on the topic of the upcoming liturgical day called the Aposticha, Stihiri na Stichovnie in Slavonic. This is followed by a canticle taken from the Gospel of Saint Simeon the Godbearer, the old, very old man who greeted Jesus when Jesus was brought as a baby into the temple soon after his birth. This prayer begins with the words, Now you dismiss. This is the nunc dimittis for you Latin speakers out there. Thus, after the first parts of Vespers were dominated by elements from the Old Testament, like remembering God's creation of the world and many different psalms, we now hear this prayer of Saint Simeon signalizing a transition from the Old Testament to the new. This also introduces another topic of death, actually, because according to tradition, Saint Simeon said these words shortly before his repose, but we will talk more about this in future episodes. Now the final major element of Vespers is the final Traparion, or Apolitikion. This is a brief hymn, usually of the feast or saint of the day. But at Sunday Vespers, it is the hymn to the Mother of God, Rejoice, O Virgin, Mother of God, which also reminds us of the very beginnings of the New Testament, more precisely of the greeting of the Archangel Gabriel to the All-Holy Virgin at the Annunciation. Thus, Vespers helps us to redirect our thoughts in the evening, inspiring us for a new day tomorrow by reminding us of our beginning, beginnings, from God's creation of the world as a gift to us to the very good news of Christ's entrance into our history. Now, I haven't mentioned yet another very ancient element of Vespers, and that is the several litanies that happen throughout the service, what the Russians call yiktinyi. This is a series of petitions read by the deacon or priest, followed by a response of the choir, usually, Lord have mercy, Kyrie eleison, or grant this, O Lord. These litanies in which we pray together for all of us as a community and for various people and groups of people who particularly need our prayers, like the poor and sick, these commemorations are a very ancient part 
of Christian evening services, as I already mentioned, because really it is the most natural thing in the world to pray for one another before going to bed. It's as natural as kissing your children goodnight. From ancient times, these litanies offer prayers, first and foremost, actually, for the church and civil authorities, for our bishop, our president, and so on. And let's face it, we do a much better job criticizing people in positions of authority than we do praying for them. But now let's go back to one of these parts of Vespers and talk about the Prokimenon more precisely. This is the short psalm verse that is repeated several times in the middle of Vespers. At Sunday Vespers, celebrated on Saturday evening, when we begin the weekly celebration of the Resurrection, the Prokimenon is, The Lord is King, He is clothed in beauty. This verse is taken from Psalm 92, and it is sung several times with the deacon or priest proclaiming other verses from the same psalm in between the repetition by the choir of the main verse, the prokimenon. The Greek word prokimenos means that which precedes or lies before, because the prokimenon, you see, sometimes precedes and in ancient times always preceded readings from the Bible. Now, the particular form of this part of the service one brief verse being repeated several times, is different from the other parts of Vespers. And we might wonder, what is the point of repeating the same thing several times? You see, this rep repetition actually teaches us to take pause and reflect deeply on one verse of scripture, one particularly expressive verse. We might think that deeply reflecting over se separate verses of scripture is the type of spiritual exercise accessible only to monastics leading a contemplative life in some faraway monastery. But we are all called to do this actually in the ancient service of Vespers for which Christian lay people have gathered for many centuries in cities everywhere. As I already mentioned, the Prokimenon or Psalm verse we sing several times on Saturday evening, in the Sunday service, Saturday evening, is one of praise. The Lord is King, He is clothed with beauty. We are called to praise and reflect deeply on two qualities of the resurrected Lord, two qualities He alone possesses in full measure, kingship and beauty. The Lord, as creator of the beautiful material world and as the source of all power or kinship, emerges from the tomb in his resurrection, clothed in beauty, his resurrected human body. When we praise and contemplate these qualities of the God-man in our Sunday celebration, we integrate into our prayer life a refreshing new level of communion with God. Because so often we are so preoccupied with ourselves and our mundane cares that our daily prayers look like a shopping list we are presenting to God. Get me this, get me that. But redirecting our attention to God and His absolute goodness, His power and beauty, lifts us out of our preoccupations, like our worries, our politics, our limited and limiting perceptions, because we lighten the burdens of our human shortcomings by keeping God and His absolute goodness in our hearts and minds. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't forget to check out our new website, www.srvasa.com and subscribe to our mailing list there so we can notify you about all the fun that goes on here more easily. And I hope to see you all next week for our next thrilling discussion of Vespers. Thank you.